Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so the first program in chapter three is day of the week. Okay, All right. So write a program that asks the user to the asks the user for a number in the range of one through seven. The program should display the corresponding day of the day of the week, where one is Monday, two is Tuesday, three Wednesday, four Thursday, five Friday, six Saturday, and seven Sunday. The program should display an error message if the user enters a number that is outside the range of one through seven. Okay, so the program is going to ask the user, please enter a number from one to seven, strict, okay? The program is strict, one through seven. And if the user enters one, just display Monday. If the user enters two, display Tuesday. Wednesday four, you know, Wednesday three, Thursday four, Friday five. If the user, if the user enters six, sat display Saturday, seven, Sunday. And then the program should display an error message if the user enters a number that is outside the range of one through seven. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. So th that's what we're going to do. Okay. So 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 this is what we're going to do. First, let's let's um. Um, let's, like, let's start with the first thing. So write a program that asks the user for a number in the range of 1 through 7. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's ask the user to enter, um, <coughs> sorry. Let's ask the user to enter a number in the range of 1 through 7. So I'm going to go ahead and call the print function. Oh, sorry, not the print function, the user. Sorry, <laughs> what's wrong with me? All right, not the, we need to ask the user for input. So the input function, that's what I, what I meant. Oops, I keep on terminating this with a semicolon. Again, in Java, you terminate it. Sometimes I forget, you know. I mean, it just happens. Okay, so no, no semicolon. So I'm going to call the input function and ask the user to enter a number in the range of 1 through 7. Okay, so please enter a number from 1 through 7. Okay. All right, now anything that the user returns, okay, what whatever the user types, okay, is returned as a string. But even if the user types in a number, whatever is going to be returned by the input function is going is going to be a string. So in this case, we 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 don't, we can't use a string in calculations. We can't use a string in, you know, testing to see if that testing to see what number the user typed because it was it was a string. So before before we can you know really do any testing on 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 a number, okay. In that case, in this case, the user typed in the number, but it because it's returned as a string, we need to find a way to convert that string into a number so we can use it. So so because I want this output, even though the user typed in one or two, it's going to return as a string because I want that converted to in this case an integer. I'm going to surround everything that the user typed with the int function. Okay, so I'm surrounding everything that is a type with an int, int function. An int function is basically going to convert everything that is a typed. Okay. <coughs> this whole input function asking the user to enter a number from one to one from one through seven. It's going to convert that response that return um what this input function is going to return is going to return um it's going to convert it into an integer. Now once the program does that we need a place to store that value, okay? That value that has been converted to an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, a variable. I'm going, oops. I'm going to go ahead and, and create a, yeah, create a variable. I'm going to call it user input. Oh no, user number. So, <coughs> I'm sorry, I have a slight cough, um, so please bear with me. Um, so user number is now going to hold the number that the user has typed converted to an integer, okay? All right, so now we have the number stored in a variable user, user number. So we can go ahead and, and check to see which number it is so we can display the right um, day, day of the week. So I'm going to create an if statement and say if the user number, if the user number is equal to one, okay, I'm using double equals to for comparison. And if you use one equal, you're basically assigning one to user number. So don't use one equal. One is assigning one to user number. So double equal, you're comparing. So if user number is equal to one, okay, <coughs> then in that case, I'm using a colon here. Okay, so then in, if user number is equal to one, then in that case, just print Monday. 
okay else if but in this case it's not else if else if it's in, in other languages or java okay in python it's it's l l l l f okay l f basically basically else if has been shortened to l f okay so l l f is like else if in other languages <coughs> it's basically an else if shortened okay so if user number is equal to one print monday l l f okay a bit or else if okay else if as I, I i didn't mean to put this okay I have to type something first. User number. Else, if user number is equal to two, colon, print Tuesday. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to basically copy this LLF statement and I'm going to repeat it. Okay, so LF user number is equal to three. Then this is a Wednesday. Then Wednesday. And then LF user number is equal to four. Then we have a Thursday. Oh, my typing. Sorry, it's, it's bad sometimes. But sometimes, if not always, okay. And then LF, LF. <laughs> it sounds weird saying LF. Actually, what it means is else if, but then they shortened it Python because they like shortcut, I guess. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so LF user number is equal to five. Then print Friday. And then LF. User number is equal to six. Oh, that's my brother. I'm really sorry. I'll call him back. <laughs> I'll call him back. He keeps on calling. All right. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry that I, I apologize. I'll tell him. I'll tell him he called right in, right when I was making a video. He's, he's probably going to call back. I, 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 please, please bear with me. Okay. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> okay. So a left user number is equal to uh, to six. That's uh next one six which is going to be Saturday then the last one LF user number is equal to seven oops now it's joining the question then the day is Sunday if it's seven then a the day is Sunday uh, there's no else with this one so because we are we are restricting the number from two, uh, to one through through seven and now we are done with the if statement and checking the program says the, you know the program should display an error message if the user enters a number that is outside the range of one through seven okay okay so there are a couple of ways you can do this um, <coughs> we can use a while loop okay and keep asking the user this question anytime he, he or she doesn't answer and put in the right number Okay, we can use a while loop around this um, statement and do that. Anytime the, the person doesn't um, display the right number, we can um, ch just keep asking, okay, so that the person doesn't have to start the program again. But this one, uh, saying the program should display an error message if the user enters a number that is outside the range. One, you can also, you can do that. You can you do the while loop. Um, you can you can do the while loop, or at the same, or you can just add an else statement here. We can just add an, an else statement, say. Um, else else then print the error message please enter uh, or we can say whatever the user typed okay we can even use you know show the user what, what they type we can say user number okay and I'm going to concatenate this and uh, again User number is not um, it's not from one. It's not a number from one to seven. Please enter the the 
be, 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 uh, be, be, because I don't want to cross this line over here. Okay, I want to try to keep 80 characters on a line. So this is like a guideline for me. It's like a Python thing. I don't, I don't want to cross 80 characters on a line. I'm going to break it. Break this string to a new line. And anytime you break a string to a new line, you have to type in the backslash before you hit enter, before you break it on a new line. Okay. <coughs> so, user number is not the number from 1 to 7. Please enter the... I'm going to start to continue the string. Enter the correct... Or please enter a correct number. A correct number. You can you can you can also you can do a while create a while loop and uh, in such a way that it, it does this too. But the while loop will keep asking instead of th this one will just once it's it, once the user types in the wrong number it will display this message and then quit. And the, and the person will have to run the program again. But the while loop will keep asking you know, before way before you know it, it checks this. It, it will make sure that the user types in the correct thing even before it checks this. But this is also works. But this is going to display a message. Uh, if it's wrong, and the program is going to end, and it's going to, uh, the, pro the, the user would have to run the program again. So user number is not the number from one to seven. Please enter a correct number. <coughs> if you try to concatenate an integer to a string, Python is going to complain that it cannot com convert an integer to a string in implicitly. It can't do it by itself. So that means we have to do it explicitly. We have to do it by ourselves. So before I do that, let's just run it and then see that message. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, debug this and save the file. Uh, just one moment, my PC is slow, my computer is slow. <coughs> wow, yeah, I have, a, I have a bunch of stuff running in the background. Okay, so desktop, Python, Okay, I need to create a new folder in chapter over here. So I'm going to call it chapter three. And yeah, so I'm going to save this as day of week dot pi. Day of the week. Of the week dot pi. But before that I need to create a folder. I want to create a folder for that. So so I keep everything in the folder. Day of the week dot pi. And I'll save this in here. Okay, so now this is done and the program is running. Let me just uh, edit this a little bit. Please enter a number from one through seven, colon, space. Okay, so I'm going to stop this and debug it again. I'm going to enter negative two. Okay, so now this is the error I was talking about. It says unsupported operon types for plus int and string. Okay, so basically that, that that's what it means. It says <coughs> it can't basically it can't con um, it can't uh, convert this to a, a string. It, it can't do do it implicitly. It can't convert this string to a this integer to a string imp implicitly. So that means we have to do, do it ourselves. And to do it, to do that, one way to do that is to use a string function which is the str right str function which stands for string basically you are converting the user number to a string and then now because you are converting so because you have a string here because this function is going to convert the user number to a string you can go ahead and concatenate a string to a string that it shouldn't complain about that it should be able to do that so i'm going to debug this again enter negative three <coughs> sorry negative three hit enter and then now it says Ne okay, see, this, this, this statement is now kicking in. It says, negative 3 is not a number from 1 to 7. Please enter a correct number. And that's what the question said. The program should display an error message if the user enters a number that is outside the range of 1 through 7. Negative 3 is outside the range of 1 to 7. So I'm going to try another number. Let me take this up a little bit so you can see it. I'm going to try, um, in, the, in this case, 45. Okay, and it says, 45 is not a number from 1 to 7. Please enter a correct number. Okay. All right. <coughs> Sorry. Well, I was about to use a while loop. I don't think in the book chap uh, chapter th uh, three even talked about while loops. I think while loops was in chapter four. 
So in this case, it's, it's better we stick with if. I think the um, if else statement. So this is fine. I think I was um, go, moving ahead. I think in the book chapter 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 four is what talks about loops. So I'm going to stick with what the chapter um, taught, and then we are using just just those tools that we've learned in chapter th chapter three to learn to learn to do this if else. Okay, if else. I think let, let me go ahead and cross check. I have the book here. So this this is the question. I just copied it, copied and pasted it in the text editor so that we can work with it. The question, and let me see chapter. Chapter, see chapter three talked about if statement, if else, comparing string nested decisions, logical, and then loops as repetition structure, uh, repetition structures, which is over here. Okay, so while yeah, so so we, um, I wanted to use a while loop, but I, I, you know it would I I didn't I didn't want to do that. I want to stick with what we've learned in chapter three so far to do the program challenges. So it's fine. So this if statement, this this works fine for us. Okay, so yeah. Now let's try something that is in the range one to one through seven. Okay, so let's try one. It says Monday. Uh, let's try another a couple of a couple of them. Let's try two Tuesday. Six Saturday. Let's try um, three, Wednesday, seven. Oops, I typed it in the, in the over here. Seven and say Sunday. Nine, nine is not a number from one to seven. Please enter correct numbers. All right, so the program works. We use everything that was in the book. We use everything that was required for, 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 um from us in the book okay the tools that we only had in chapter three and it's good i didn't you know use a while loop because while loop is in chapter four and the book hasn't covered that yet but we've used everything in the chapter three i mean what we've learned in chapter three to solve this which is good okay so <coughs> sorry about my cough <laughs> and if uh, you have any questions please comment down below and i'll do everything to respond to them um, thank you very much for watching have a good day have a good night have a good sleep uh, wherever you are, um, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Next time with the next program. Okay, bye bye.